Hi everyone and welcome to my final video for 2017. It's been a little while since I've posted anything on this channel, uh, mainly because I've just been so uh, busy with work uh, over the last couple of months uh, that I had to prioritise to that. Uh, so thank you for hanging around and I hope this video uh, wraps up the year nicely uh, for, for you. I hope you've all had a great uh, holiday season so far. Um, it's pretty hot here in Melbourne, it's about 36 degrees uh, today which is about 97, I think, uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, so it's pretty warm and um, enjoying the cricket on the TV and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, had a great Christmas with my family uh, and I'm about to head off overseas for uh, just over a week to do some uh, performances in China uh, and have packed pens very carefully for that. I'm taking three pens with me, a, a pilot vanishing point with Namiki black cartridges um, that I can easily swap in and out between flights um, if that proves to be an issue. And then my two Twisbees, of course, the 580 and uh, the VAC Mini, uh, which is in smoke, the smoke finish, which I really like. Um, I've inked the, uh, the VAC Mini with Noodler's Habanero just for a bit of something different, uh, and you'll see the other one very soon. Okay, um, so today's video is a sort of top five. I know there are a lot of these floating around at the moment, but as this is the first year I've been involved in the community, not just interested in pens and stationery like I have my entire life, but actually actively engaging with the community that I had no idea was there until um, late last year. It's been really amazing. Um, so uh, I thought, seeing as I've been engaged in the community a little bit more, what I might do is I might just do a bit of a wrap up of my year in the five pens and inks uh, that I um, came to know this year that I really, really love. So what I've done is I've matched pen number five with ink number five and number four with number four, etc., right through to the, the top, uh, which ends up being a really great partnership at the top. A couple of interesting partnerships on the way through, uh, things that I've never inked with that combination before. Um, but yeah, so it's five pens, five inks, and what I'm just going to do is I'm going to do five points about each of them uh, as to why these are on the list. So what was my criteria? Well, the criteria is different, obviously, for, for me as it would be for other people. Some people's greatest of all time pens are high-end pens that I can't justify spending that much money on a pen. Uh, for me, a pen has to be affordable, it has to be reliable, it has to be pleasant to use. It can have something unique about it, um, but if it's a $100 pen with a steel nib or a $300 pen with a gold nib, it doesn't faze me at all, uh, as long as it writes well and as long as it does what I need it to do. And recently, as I found out, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you might know, the pen has to be replaceable. Uh, I accidentally left a couple of pens on a flight, on a plane, uh, and um, yeah, had to instantly replace one of them as it was a pen that I need to have in my case at all times. So let's dive in uh, with pen number five and ink number five. Now, this pen I got in March this year uh, and it was a pen that I wouldn't have bought for myself. Um, it, it was, I knew it was around, it's been around for a number of years, uh, but I would never have actually got it myself. Uh, and my parents got it for me knowing that I enjoyed fountain pens and it is the Faber-Castell Loom. Now, this pen is really an interesting design um, and a really affordable pen and it's a pen that I really enjoyed much more than I thought I would. So what I've done is I've just done a little page uh, for each uh, pen and ink combination uh, so you can see it. I've inked this with my number five ink uh, which is Lamy Dark Lilac which although it was a limited edition for 2016 I only got this year uh, thanks to a generous uh, fountain pen friend uh, in the community here in Australia who supplied me with a bottle at the cost of buying it new. Um, so that was pretty awesome. So here is the five points about this pen and ink combination. Firstly, the pen. It is super smooth. I, for a steel nib at this price range, I haven't found a pen that is actually smoother. Uh, it puts the Twisby Ecos, the uh, Lamy Safaris and All-Stars, certainly the Petro uh, Pilot Metropolitan, all to shame. Uh, and Faber-Castell have just done an amazing job with this nib. As I said, it's just a steel nib, uh, but it's a really wonderful nib. This is medium and it's quite broad for a medium. As I said, it's got a great design. Um, it's a really interesting looking pen. The cap 
Uh, it's not for everybody, but I really love it. As I said, wet and broad, super affordable. Um, I'm not going to go into the pricing of these pens uh, as we go through today, but I, but this is in that sort of starter pen range, um, similar, I suppose, to an All Star or something like that. As I said, an amazing starter pen. This is a pen that I suggest to people when they say, "What pen should I get first?" Or if they've tried a couple of really, um, you know, a couple of Chinese pens or something like that, I suggest this is a really great next step. As for the ink, it's just a great purple. Uh, you can see that there's some sheen, it's rich, it's dark, it's beautiful. It's super well behaved, um, and I found this to be excellent in all pens. I've tried it in Lamy's, in Faber-Castell, in Twisby's. In fact, the one of the Twisby's I lost on a flight was actually inked with Lamy Dark Lilac at the time. So I was gutted for many reasons. Also, this is a limited edition ink. So it's a unique colour. Uh, there are a couple of other brands of ink that have similar shades of purple. I know there's a couple of the dye inks that are considered to be quite similar. Uh, Cross Violet is considered to be similar. I don't see that necessarily myself. A close one is uh, Dare Tremendous uh, Aubergine or Alexandra, Alexandra Hamilton, uh, which is probably a little bit darker and a bit dustier this, than this. This is quite vibrant and, and clear. Uh, and I think that's what makes it really unique. So as I said, this ink isn't available. So if you see it, grab it. It's just, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful ink. But this pen and this ink, really great combination. Not something I've paired up before um, and probably won't as an everyday writing pair, but really lovely to, to have it in this pen. Okay, so what pen's next? Well. This pen uh, was one that was one that I'd wanted to buy for quite a while, um, over a year, in fact, from the time I first saw it to when I purchased it. Um, and I think I got it in around uh, April uh, of this year. The pen is the Pilot Custom 74. Um, and I'd looked at this pen for over a year before I bought it, um, but never really bit the bullet and I'm glad I did because it really is a really fabulous pen. Um, 14 karat gold nib, quite generous in terms of the flow and just beautiful to write with and feels great in the hand. Um, I paired this up with Diamine Terracotta. Now this colour is so unique uh, and people who see it just rave about it because it is just so beautiful. Um, so the five points, let's start. This pen is a great size and has a fantastic feel in the hand. It's not too big, but it's certainly not a small pen like, say, the Pilot Metropolitan, which has quite a narrow section. This pen really does have, you know, a good size in the hand, um, and posted or unposted is very, very well balanced. As I said, ni nice 14 karat gold nib um, with some spring in it, which is really nice, particularly for inks that shade like this one. Um, as I said, my first gold nib. It's a really nice nib. It's very smooth. It's uh, it's it's not buttery smooth, but it's it's certainly one of the smoothest nibs I've ever used. And the fifth point about this pen is that it's widely available and surprisingly affordable for a gold nib. It's probably one of the the cheapest gold nib pens that I've found on the market. The ink. Okay, this is a lovely ink with a matte finish. It's not a, sh a shiny ink, and you're not going to get sheen out of it um, unless you put heaps of it down like swabs and swabs and swabs with writing you're not going to get a sheen but you do get some incredible shading um, really lovely light browns through to dark rich sort of almost coffee browns it's affordable and available it was part of the first 150th anniversary set from Dye Mine, and it is just it's it's everywhere it's not terribly expensive it's it's more expensive than the regular Dye Mine line but it's not um, you know certainly not gonna break your, your bank it's a unique colour. There are a few other sort of matte browns around on the market. I'm thinking things like um, Monteverde's Canyon Rust or uh, a couple of Robert Osters, think something like Cafe Crema uh, or even Robert Osters' uh, own terracotta, but that's a much more orange terracotta. This is sort of more of the earthy brown, clay sort of colour terracotta. And also it has a cool bottle. Uh, I know that's not necessarily a selling point, but I really love these triangular bottles. Um, I think that I'd love to eventually get a you know, full circle of them. I've got a number of these uh, these inks, and uh, yeah, I think they it's a really nice, unique sort of bottle design. Okay, so extra about this pen. 
This pen varies in price a lot. Um, if you buy it from in Australia in stores, uh, you're going to pay a lot more. Uh, and especially if you buy it from overseas, places like the United States or uh, in the UK or in parts of Europe where Pilot isn't so available. The best way to get this pen is through a Japanese retailer, either directly from the retailer or through a seller on something like eBay. Now there are risks that go along with that. Uh, you're not always going to get the warranty and all that sort of uh, side of it. But for the reduced price, if you're happy to take the punt, which I did, um, then I think it's worth doing. Um, you can get the pen for around the 100 Australian dollar mark, which for a gold nib uh, with a really reliable nib uh, and you know all the sort of the the uh, associated things that Pilot you know have going for it, uh, then it's really worth the price. It doesn't always come with a converter. The converters are proprietary uh, and not the greatest. Um, I've got I think the uh, Con 40 or Con 50 in there. I can't remember exactly which number it is. Um, and you know it's just a regular screw converter uh, but there's uh, the con 70 which is the the push uh converter uh, i've i've got one coming to put in this pen because I, I want a slightly bigger ink capacity and they're just much more reliable converters anyway from there we move to pen number three now this was a pen that as soon as i saw it on instagram i had to have it um i don't normally uh, buy a pen because of how it looks. Um, my tastes are conservative. I'm, you know, I'm, I, I like neutral colours and I like classic designs. This, the design of this pen is slightly different and it is unique, certainly unique, but it was the colour that grabbed me. That pen is the Diplomat Aero uh, in the sunset orange finish. Now I've matched this with Aurora Black, which is one of my everyday writing inks, and Although the orange of this pen is just so vibrant and rich, matching it somehow with this black is actually really quite a nice, a nice match. I've not used this before. The first uh, ink I put in this pen was, I think, uh, I think it might have been Noodler's Habanero, uh, and I've tried a number of other oranges um, in the pen, and I really love it with orange ink, uh, but with this black, it's quite a, a nice sort of everyday sort of combination. Now you can see from the design, it's got this really cool sort of torpedo shape and designed after the Hindenburg uh, sort of feel uh, of it. Um, and it's just a push to cap. It's got a really great section. The material of this pen feels incredible uh, and it adds to that depth of color, that matte sort of um, finish on the, on the section as well as the clip. Now, um, my only issue with this pen that I've ever had was that the clip broke and I had to get it repaired um, and it was That was a bit of a, a shame, but apart from that the build is really great um, And it's a pen that I, I really really love now as you'll see from the five points why so firstly This is one of the best steel nibs going around this pen isn't cheap um, If you buy it from in Australia if you buy it from the UK or from Europe Sorry, you can get it a little bit cheaper buying it in Australia this pen retails for much more, almost double what it would have cost me, uh, what it cost me to get from Europe. Um, and it is only a steel nib, but it is absolutely worth it. It's one of the best, smoothest, most reliable steel nibs going around. It's a really unique design, and I had to have this color. Um, the section is perfect for my hand. It's the right length. It narrows nicely, uh, and it feels just, yeah, it feels right uh, in my hand. Um, and it's not too big a section, which um, I quite like. The other thing that's interesting about this pen is that it's a talking point. If people see this pen, they're intrigued by it. It's not your standard, you know, black and gold cigar shaped pen. There's something unique about it. And it's always nice to have something that can strike up a conversation about pens and hopefully bring people into the, the hobby themselves. Um, yeah, it's just nice to sort of have that as a starting point. Now this ink, Aurora Black, well-known ink, well-respected ink, it is black. It's one of the blackest blacks that I have in my collection and um, certainly one of the blackest inks that I uh, use as an everyday ink. The bottle's great, it's a good size, good opening, really sturdy uh, and something that, you know, it, it, that is for me a selling point with this ink. 
it's not the cheaper thing, but you do get a good amount. You get 45 mils in the bottle, uh, and that will last for a long time, obviously depending on how much you write with it. It's a wet ink, it's smooth on the page. It's just a really lovely black ink. Excellent as an everyday writer. And this has been my everyday writer ink now for a couple of months, and I won't be changing um, that anytime soon. I would love to try this ink in an Aurora pen. Um, I have one of the lower end Aurora pens. I have not yet bitten the bullet and gotten um, anything more expensive. I'd love to get the black and chrome uh, Dewar cart, and I think this would be a great ink in that pen. Uh, it's a, As an everyday writer, that pen looks like it would be just about perfect for me. But I'd like to try it in any uh, Aurora pen, and you never know when that opportunity might come up. As I said, um, the build of this pen is rock solid, um, but the real selling point of the pen is this nib. It is just one of the best um, nibs that I have used, gold or steel. It's just absolutely bang on. Well, now we come to the number two pen on my list, and this is a classic. It's an icon. It's uh, a pen that if you're in the fountain pen community in any way, you will know of this pen, and most of you will either have had it or have tried one at some point. Uh, it is, it really needs no introduction. It is the Lamy 2000. This pen is fabulous. Um, hooded nib, classic design, been around for decades, basically unchanged. It's a, it's, it's the classic pen bit for a reason. Um, Price-wise, this is not a cheap pen. Uh, it's not an expensive pen, but it's not a cheap pen. Um, and it's absolutely worth the money. Gold nib, really smooth, and um, yeah, it's, it's certainly something that I envied over for quite a while and really wanted, and then when I got it, I was so glad I did. Now, I've matched this with uh, Dimine Syra, which is a beautiful dark magenta ink. Um, I'm really coming to like inks that have a bit of colour to them but are darker than have a bit of depth. Um, as you can see here uh, on, on the page, uh, it's in the darker sections it's got a real depth but then you get these pops of, of the colour. So let's talk through the points. Pen, as I said, is an iconic design and absolutely classic. It's one of the fountain pens um, that from the 20th and 21st century, well originally from the 20th century of course, that has really um, stood the test of time and been in co constant uh, production. It's a piston filler. Now, I there's only a couple of filling systems that I don't like. One of those vacuumatic sacks and anything with a sack, they're just hard to clean. Um, and part of my fountain pen philosophy is it's got to be usable in every way. Converters are easy to clean. Cartridges are reliable and affordable and are easy to manage. Uh, you know, it runs out, you replace it. That's easy. Converters give you a wide variety of ink, uh, but the capacity is generally fairly low. So when you get a piston filler, uh, you can get a lot more ink, therefore a lot more writing done, uh, and also they're not terribly hard to clean. Um, as long as you know what you're doing and are comfortable doing it, they are great uh, and easy pens to clean. So the piston filler is my favourite mechanism, and the top two pens in my list are both piston fillers. Um, and this one is no exception. It's got a really lovely wet and smooth nib. Uh, it writes like a dream. It's very comfortable to hold. Uh, uh, the shape and design are both sort of not, you know, it's not a huge pen. It fits well in the hand and the material it's made of feels comfortable in the hand and like it's not going to slip around. It's also understated. If you saw that on a on a desk somewhere, you wouldn't necessarily think that was a a gold nibbed fountain pen uh, and sometimes that's nice you don't want people necessarily always knowing that what you're writing with um, costs something like a thousand times as much as a ballpoint pen um, although that would be a fairly cheap ballpoint pen in this case uh, but you know what I mean uh, as for the ink what I love about these diamond inks is that they are super affordable in Australia, you get 80 mils for about $25. That's ridiculously cheap. This one has amazing depth of colour, um, as I said, and great shading. It's a unique colour. I don't have anything else like quite like this in my collection. There are a couple of inks. Um, Robert Oster's Australian Shiraz is a similar sort of colour, uh, and there are a few um, uh, 
sort of uh, darker detrimental, detrimentous colors that are verging on it as well. Uh, there are a number of them, but nothing quite like this. The other thing about die mining is that they're super well behaved. Sometimes they can clag up in a pen, uh, something like ancient copper or ox blood tend to get that sort of that crusty uh, finish around the nib, but this one is really, really well behaved. So yes, while not cheap, this is a lifetime pen. It's a pen you buy and unless you lose it or break it, it stays with you a long time. The sweet spot on the nib, I was a bit concerned about being a left-handed, uh, left hander but it is fine. I've never had an issue uh, with that. In terms of Syrah, it takes a little bit of time to dry and it was a, su a, pro a surprise favourite for me. I went into a store uh, here in Melbourne to buy a blue-black ink uh, and nothing really struck me. Um, but I saw Syrah and just bought it on a whim and it's turned out to be one of my favourite inks and one of the inks I've used more than any other. Um, so yeah, beautiful ink, uh, lovely pen and a really great combination, one I've never actually paired up but uh, I think I'll be pairing up again. So now we come to my final pen, uh, my number one pen and ink for 2017. This is a pen that has been around for a few years, it's not a new pen, but the brand this year was new to me. Um, I'd seen a, a, a large amount of reviews for this pen uh, from um, other YouTube reviewers uh, and read other blogs and uh, the general consensus was that this was a really, really great pen. And I bought one, sort of just more or less wondering what it would be like. I tried other pens, uh, the lower end pens from this brand and was quite happy with them. So I thought, well, why not try uh, the slightly more expensive Cousin? And that pen is the Twisby Diamond 580. Now this is the basic 580. It's not one of the AL ones or the fancy colors. I'm, I'm not yet really keen on uh, any of those, although I would love to get the Lava if one of those popped up. Um, so this is a piston filler once again with a great capacity. It's a smooth, wet steel nib. It's affordable, reliable, first time every time, uh, and it's easy to clean and maintain. Twisby, Twisby provides you with the tools to take these pens apart, which is brilliant. Um, and as you can see here on point number three, it's replaceable. This is the pen I left on a plane. This particular one is only about a month old, um, but I had to have one of these in my collection at all times. The ink. This is a beautiful, unique colour. It's got some nice sheen that isn't overpowering. You always see the base colour. It's got great shading and it's really affordable uh, and available at, from a lot of retailers now. Robert Oster's inks are really, really becoming uh, widely used now, which is brilliant for Robert and for the company and for Australia. Australian made inks, go Australia. It's also super well behaved. It's beautiful. It works like a dream. Pen and ink, fantastic. Um, and you know you can take this pen on a plane it doesn't leak or anything like that and it's my most inked pen and i'm already on the second bottle of tranquility so i think that says a lot it's the only ink i've actually finished a bottle of and i'm about a quarter of the way through the next one so that was my five um i hope you uh enjoyed that i hope you found it interesting if you did please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel hit the notifications button uh, all that stuff drop me messages i want to know what you love writing with and if you want to, um, if you th think there are things I should be looking at, let me know. Um, thank you for your support over this year. Um, I've got a few things already in the pipeline for next year, uh, and I look forward to seeing you then. Catch you later.